Amen. I wasn't actually aware before uh, this morning that uh, these books were going to be handed out, so it seems like everyone's writing a bit of a review of my attempt to preach this morning, which is uh, going to be interesting. I'll see you scribbling away or going... Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's good to make notes, isn't it? And it's something which I think that I've only really come to in the last year or so, because before, before that I didn't really make notes during preaches, and it's actually a really helpful thing to do, I think, so I would encourage it. Um, so today we are going to be looking at John 3, uh, the story of Jesus meeting with Nicodemus, uh, if you'd like to turn there. But before we kind of get stuck in, um, I just wanted to share a little bit of my kind of journey, and I can see Ollie smiling in the, cor- in the corner, uh, in terms of my preach prep this morning, because me and Ollie have been in close communication, um, obviously Ollie leading worship this morning, I was letting him know what I was preparing, what my thoughts were. Um, and actually, uh, I prepared a preach right up until Wednesday, and I told Ollie all about it, given him all the details, and then I, thought, I felt that God said, I don't want you to do that. <laughs> uh, and so Ollie's been really gracious with me, so thank you, Ollie, uh, for that this week. Um, but actually, in, in doing that, uh, actually, the, the reason why I think God prompted me to change what I was going to speak about is kind of part of the call that I want to share this morning. And actually what he was teaching me, I think, is relevant for all of us this morning. Um, and it, it's to do with this, uh, this concept of not getting bored of uh, the gospel and the things that are in front of us when we read scripture. And actually, I think uh, in my preparation, uh, right up until Wednesday, what I was trying to do is that I was trying to delve really deeply into the scripture so deep that I could find something that nobody else had ever preached on from this passage that was going to be completely groundbreaking and actually God just prompted me to just say just look at what I'm saying look at what Jesus is saying in this passage and just just talk about that (laughs) so I, I had a bit of a restart but it kind of reminded me of this idea that sometimes we can miss what's in front of us And we're going to be talking primarily about the kingdom of God this morning and being born again. And I think often, if you've been a Christian for any length of time, these are concepts which are quite familiar to us. And I think I was really struck by how I can actually miss the significance of these things because they're so familiar. And I think that's true for all of us at times. So I really want to challenge us this morning to look at it afresh and be reminded. And the picture that I'm going to kind of use Uh, throughout all of this morning is uh, a picture of my children and how actually uh, often they can at home they're surrounded by all kinds of toys and games and books and they've got outdoor space freedom to roam they've got all these things around them but they can say I'm bored and they can just be like oh there's nothing to do And I think we can be like that sometimes with the gospel and sometimes some of these foundational aspects of our faith. We can forget them and we can overlook them. And I just felt that as God has reminded me of the kingdom of God, what that means for me and the gospel and being born again and the significance of that, I think he wants to remind all of us this morning not to miss the point of this passage. Not to be like my children just saying, I'm bored or missing all of these things around them, the joy of their salvation, the joy of our salvation. I don't want us to miss that this morning. So we're going to read from John 3, and we're going to read up to verse 17. Hopefully it will be on the screen. There we go. I'm reading from the New Living Translation, by the way. I forgot to say that last time. Um, After dark, one evening, a Jewish religious leader named Nicodemus, a Pharisee, came to speak with Jesus. Teacher, he said, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are proof enough that God is with you. Jesus replied, I assure you, unless you are born again, you can never see the kingdom of God. What do you mean? exclaimed Nicodemus. How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, The truth is, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives new life from heaven. So don't be surprised at my statement that you must be born again. 
just as you can hear the wind but can't tell where it comes from or where it is going, so you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. What do you mean? Nicodemus asked. Jesus replied, you are a respected Jewish teacher and yet you don't understand these things. I assure you, I am telling you what we know and have seen, and yet you won't believe us. But if you don't, but don't even believe me when I tell you about things that happen here on earth, how can you possibly believe if I tell you what is going on in heaven? For only I, the Son of Man, have come to earth and will return to heaven again. And as Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, so I, the Son of Man, must be lifted up on a pole, so that everyone who believes in me will have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God did not send his Son into the world to condemn it, but to save it. Yes, Lord, we just thank you for this scripture. And Lord, we just pray this morning as we explore this text together, Lord, would you just remind us of the significance of entering into the kingdom of heaven? Let us not take it for granted. Let us not miss the point this morning. Would you remind us of what you have achieved through your son this morning? And Lord, would you uh, just refuel us this morning with the joy of our salvation? And just remind us once again, Lord, of how awesome you are this morning. Fill us with awe and wonder as we look at this together. In your name. Amen. Amen. So, moving on, we're going to be briefly looking at what is the kingdom of God to start with. And this is actually a really complex topic, and the more I researched it and thought about what I was going to share this morning, the more I thought, actually, this is probably a whole preaching series in and of itself. <laughs> it's, there's a lot of complexity there, but I'm going to attempt to kind of briefly sum it up for us in five or ten minutes, so we'll see how that goes. Um, and after we do this, uh, I'm going to then zoom in on the interaction between uh, Nicodemus and Jesus, and we're going to talk about... Um, some of the things we can pull out in terms of application for ourselves. So looking through the passage that we've just read, we can see that Jesus is having this encounter with Nicodemus. And it's an intimate encounter. It's one-to-one. -one. It's when it's dark. It's at night. And Jesus is trying to explain to Nicodemus the, I the, I the idea of entering the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus is slightly inhibited by his idea of what the kingdom of God would mean, thinking about it in the physical sense. And Jesus is trying to explain this concept to him of what it means to be born again into this kingdom. And as throughout many parts of John, this chapter is helping us to, to think about things in more than just a physical way as we read it. And of course, at that time, many people were looking for the fulfillment of the kingdom of God coming. And as Jesus came to earth, actually many people were thinking that there'd be a physical manifestation of God's power, his kingdom coming, the overthrowing of the oppression of the Roman Empire, perhaps. But that wasn't God's plan, to demonstrate his kingdom. To demonstrate his kingdom, he sent Jesus to the earth. And the weight of all of his power, his might, his justice, his mercy, his, his strength is perfectly displayed at the cross when Jesus dies and then comes back to life. God uses the death and resurrection of Jesus to make a way for us to enter into his kingdom, to return to him, to be restored into relationship with him. To have allegiance in this kingdom with the king of kings. That's what entering into the kingdom of God means for us that know him today. So moving on. As I said, there's a bit of complexity to the kingdom of God on the next slide. And I've tried to kind of outline it a little bit. Just to <laughs> kind of simplify it. Um, and as I said, I don't have time to go into this in great detail, but I think it's worth acknowledging that actually the kingdom of God has always been established, as it says 
up there. And what I mean by that is, as we know in Scripture, God is the Alpha and the Omega. He has always been there. He will always reign and rule over everything. So that happened before anything was created, before we were around. But actually, when sin entered the world, God had to make a plan for us to enter into that kingdom because he desired relationship with us. He chose to do that. So as it says on the second point, through Jesus' life, death and resurrection, God has made a way for us to enter into the kingdom and we can now become citizens of the kingdom of God and not of this world. And within that, we now have our future secure. As it says, Christ returns a second time and establishes a new heavens and a new earth and we, live, we can live forever with God in his kingdom. We now have a hope beyond the grave, beyond our own physical existence here on the earth. And I felt God just remind me of the significance of that, being born again. We now enter into this kingdom. And moving on to the next slide, we can see throughout scripture, here's a couple of examples of this concept of being born again. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And 1 Peter 3, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. And I think sometimes we can miss it, <laughs> as I did in my first preach prep. Almost just miss the point. Actually, let's not be like my children, missing all of the joyous stuff that's around them. Let's not miss the joy of our salvation, the gospel, the fact we're born again, the fact that we've now entered into this kingdom and inherited so much. I really want to help us to cultivate that heart of gratefulness and thankfulness on a daily basis for our salvation because that's what everything else stems from that's the starting point that's why it's called being born again it's the start of something new let's not forget that so that we can do everything else that god has called us to do we need to remember it so let's dig in a little, a little deeper into the interaction between jesus and Nicodemus now. So here are three things which I picked out from the interaction between Jesus and Nicodemus. And the first thing is Jesus is robust enough to handle our questions and our doubts. And I think there's a danger that we can read this passage and we can think, what stupid questions Nicodemus is asking? Like, can a child, can a baby go back in its mother's womb? What do you mean? I don't get it. You read it and think, come on, isn't it obvious? And I think we do that in other parts of scripture too. We read interactions with the disciples and we think, come on, you've got to be getting it at this point. It's pretty obvious to us. But actually, we all have doubts. We all have questions. And sometimes when we read scripture, we can't understand it. Let's not assume that we're any better than Nicodemus when we read this. And actually, Nicodemus asks really direct questions, and Jesus is robust enough to handle that. He's robust enough to ask, for, for us to ask questions of him, to ask questions of scripture, to ask questions when we struggle with elements of scripture. Let's approach him with boldness, because Jesus can handle that. And he wants us to boldly approach him. He wants that conversation with us where we're being honest. And actually in this interaction with Nicodemus, we see that Jesus is really gracious and patient and he gives reassurance. In verse eight, it talks about not knowing where the wind comes from or where it goes and talks about the fact that you can't explain being born of the spirit. It's okay to not fully understand it all. And that's not a get out for not studying scripture and going deeper, <laughs> but actually we need God to be able to understand it 
and for him to reveal his truth by his spirit. Isn't it equally comforting and humbling to know that God accepts us into his kingdom without us having to fully grasp and understand all of the intricacies there are within scripture? We don't need to know it all before we are accepted into his kingdom. I, for one, am so grateful for that. <laughs> because it's not all of those things that we know which qualify us to get into the kingdom of God. That's earning our place. We can never live up to that expectation. It's that simple step of faith. I believe Jesus is real. I believe God sent him to this earth to die for me, to save me from all the things I've done wrong. And he was raised to life so that I might be raised to life through him and have a new identity in Christ. That's it as the starting point when we're talking about being born again. And Jesus allows all to come before him and enter into the kingdom. As it says really clearly in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever <coughs> believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. It's not just for those with the highest IQ or those that have read the Bible back to front and completely understand it, not that that's possible, <laughs> or that have a good moral code or a really successful for one ethnic group or for one race, it's for whoever believes, it is for all. And the last one, Jesus challenges us, just as he challenges Nicodemus and his idea of just the physical. The gospel is a challenge. Let's not forget that. Let's prepare ourselves to be challenged when we read scripture and when we hear God's word, and when we hear God speaking to us, let's prepare to be challenged, because that's what new life is about. It's about not being the old person anymore, but taking on the new identity that we have in Christ. It's about pressing forward and leaving old things behind. A complete transformation. Not just some of that stuff, but all of it. That's what God has called us to. Let's prepare ourselves to be challenged. Our thinking, our behavior, our attitudes. That's why Jesus describes it as being born again. It is radical. God is in the business of complete renewal, not just partial. Not just an improvement of our moral compass or to make us better people. Complete renewal. And actually moving on to the next slide, I think one thing I was struck by is actually we can initially think Nicodemus, this fellow up here, <laughs> is perhaps quite stupid. He's not getting it. But actually, I think we can learn a lot from him, which I've already touched on. Actually, he approaches Jesus on the basis of who he is. It says that Nicodemus said to Jesus, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are proof enough that God is with you. And that's exactly how we should approach Jesus, on the basis of what he's achieved, on the basis of who God is that we know already. That's how we should boldly approach him with our questions, our struggles, our doubts. So asking questions, sharing doubts. And actually, I think it's really helpful to seek out the wisdom of other people, other people in church, and just have that boldness to ask questions. Perhaps people that have uh, had a faith longer than you have, somebody you trust, seek them out. Let's be brave in our conversations because let's face it, we all struggle with different elements of scripture dependent on our life experiences and how long we've been a Christian, lots of different factors, but we all struggle with different elements of the Bible. And actually, it's really important to be honest about that. And I think it's something we don't talk about often enough, that we all struggle at times. And beneath all of Nicodemus' questioning is his desire to know more of the truth. That's what he wants. And I just felt really prompted by that, actually. Do I have an increased appetite to know God more, to know more of his truth, so that he can change me? 
we inherit so much in the kingdom of God. And I'm going to go back to that picture of the girls at home just saying they're bored and missing all of the stuff around them, all the riches, all those toys, all those amazing things. We inherit so much in the kingdom and sometimes we are like that, we miss it. <clears throat> saying we're bored or focused on what's at our feet, God wants to liberate us from that and allow us to have access to all of the joy of our salvation and what that means. On the next slide, 2 Corinthians 8, verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake became poor, so that you might through his poverty become rich. Isn't that amazing, that great exchange that happens? And again, you may have heard, read this lots of times, you may have heard this lots of times, but I just felt that God wants to renew that sense of excitement about these facts. These are facts about you if you know Jesus this morning. And I just feel that God wants to raise our levels of joy and excitement and passion for these truths once again. Because I think sometimes we so easily overlook them. We are so rich in this new life that God has called us to. And to be honest, you don't always feel like that. I don't always feel like that, do you? You don't always feel rich with all the joys of being saved into the kingdom of God and everything that he's given us. We don't always feel like that. And this morning, God wants to remind you of what he has given you, what he has called you to. He's called you into this new kingdom so that you might leave the old behind and walk in the joy of his salvation. Today, you are a new creation, born again, like I've said, complete renewal. And he is not finished with us yet. He is not finished with us yet. So that moment we were born again into this kingdom, there's not a sense of God leaving us there, but actually by his spirit, he is working in us and his promise is he will continue that work until completion. The next slide, another verse from 2 Corinthians. And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is spirit. This morning, I just want us to behold the glory of the Lord this morning, once again. Behold what he has done this morning. Behold the fact that you are ent entering into this glorious kingdom. By his spirit, he has done a work in you, which means that you are born into new life. Let's be reminded of that this morning. But God has not left us there. He continues to transform us to the image of Jesus. How amazing is that? Mm. That he doesn't just leave us where we're at, but he's continuing to work in us by his spirit. Let's not forget what it means to be born again into the kingdom of God. I miss this like my girls at home, just saying they're bored or not seeing all the joy that is around them. I'm just going to finish with this lyrics from a song, which has just been on my heart before I even knew I was going to preach on this topic, but I think it's, it's so relevant. Just as a reminder of what God has done, and almost, I think, a declaration in our hearts this morning not to forget these things and overlook them, because I think in my preach prep, I did. <laughs> And I think we all can at times. I won't forget the moment I heard you call my name. Out of the grip of darkness, into the light of grace. Just like Lazarus, you've brought me back to life. And where there was dead religion, now there is living faith. All of my hope and freedom are found in Jesus name just like Lazarus you've brought me back to life no longer I who live but Christ in me 
for I've been born again. My heart is free. The hope of heaven before me, the grave behind. Hallelujah, you've brought me back to life. When something says I am guilty, I'll point to the price you've paid. When something says I'm not worthy, I'll point to that empty grave. Just like Lazarus, you've brought me back to life. It is no longer I who live, but Christ in me. For I've been born again. My heart is free. The hope of heaven before me, the grave behind. Hallelujah, you've brought me back to life. Shall we stand and I'll, I'll pray for us. And the band can come back up. Yes, Lord, we just come to you this morning, and Lord, I just thank you for how you've reminded me this week of the significance of the new life that you have given me, Lord, and I want to live and walk in the truth and in the light of that, and I pray that for all of us this morning, as we've looked at what it means to be uh, born again into the kingdom of yours, to inherit so many riches, Lord, would you just... Fill us once again by your spirit with the joy of your salvation. Remind us when we might have overlooked and detoured and missed the point and not seen all the amazing stuff that you have bestowed upon us, Lord. We just thank you for that great exchange that happened at the cross where everything that we would do, Jesus took upon himself. We just thank you so much for that. We want to celebrate that this morning. Lord, that is what has brought us into your kingdom. That is what has given us new life. And we place our trust completely in you for our future, Lord. And we thank you that we have an inheritance in you. We thank you that the future is secure. And one day there will be a new heavens and a new earth, Lord. Our future is secure in you. But remind us here and now today, Lord, of what it means to be born again by your spirit. We may not fully understand it, Lord, and you say that's okay. Lord, when we have doubts and struggles, would we come to you, Lord, on the basis that, Jesus, you are real, you died on a cross for, for me, and you are raised to life, and so I am raised to life. Would we come to you on the basis of all of that, believing that everything you say is true? All of your words in the Bible are true. When we are wrestling with it, Lord, help us, Lord. And help us to press forward knowing that you are not finished with us yet, Lord. We are born again and you are still with us now, transforming us from one degree of glory to another. Lord, we thank you so much that you want to make us more like your son. And we stand here before you as, as your people and say, do it, Lord. We are here uh, giving ourselves to you. Lord, and say, have your way in our lives. Lead us where you want to lead us, Lord. Transform us to be more like Jesus by the power of your spirit and help us to live in this new life you have given us. In your name. Amen. Amen.